What sets Ariel apart from the other Disney princesses? Let's find out by watching her most effortlessly charming moments as we learn some Spanish. ¿Están listos? ¿Alguna vez habías visto en tu vida algo más lindo que esto? ¡Qué lindo! Pero, ¿qué es eso? Ah, uh, no lo sé, pero Scorol nos lo dirá. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Lo oíste? Mm, ¿Y esto qué será? Ariel. Flounder, ¿quieres calmarte? Nada va a pasar. ¿Alguna vez habías visto en tu vida algo más lindo que esto? Más lindo que means prettier than. The comparative in Spanish is formed by más, more, plus an adjective, plus que, than. For example, Ariel is más rápida que Flounder. Ariel is faster than Flounder. In this scene, Ariel is saying that a fork is the prettiest thing that she has ever seen since she has little to no actual knowledge about human-made tools. ¿Alguna vez habías visto en tu vida algo más lindo que esto? ¡Qué lindo! Pero, ¿qué es eso? Que, in a question and with an accent on the E, means what? But without an accent, it can be used in a comparison to mean than, as we've seen before. Ariel es más fuerte que Flounder. Ariel is stronger than Flounder. Here, Flounder is very confused because he's not used to seeing human objects. So he asks, ¿Qué es eso? Eso means that. In Spanish, there's a difference between this and that, just like in English. Eso, that, refers to something that is further away. On the other hand, esto means this, and it refers to something that is closer to the speaker. For example, esto es un tenedor. This is a fork. ¡Qué lindo! Pero, ¿qué es eso? Ah, uh, no lo sé, pero Scorol nos lo dirá. The pronoun nos means us, so it's used to talk about something affecting ourselves. Dirá comes from the verb decir, which means to tell. Dirá is the future tense, which is why it translates to will tell. Here, Ariel is reminding Flounder that they can ask their friend Scuttle later what all the objects that they found are. Uh, no lo sé, pero Scuttle nos lo dirá. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Lo oíste? Mm, ¿Y esto qué será? ¿Qué será here means what might this be? And clearly, this isn't a literal translation. As we've seen before, que in a direct question means what. Será is the future tense of the verb ser, which means to be. In this case, when you're using que and será together, you're asking yourself what something might be. If you were to say que será without the question marks, then you'd be saying whatever will be, just like the song. Que será, será, whatever will be, will be. Here, Ariel is just wondering out loud to herself about the object's use. ¿Y esto qué será? Ariel. Flounder, ¿quieres calmarte? Nada va a pasar. Quieres comes from the verb querer, which means to want. Calmarte comes from the verb calmar, which means to calm down or to relax. So, taking literally the question, ¿quieres calmarte? would mean, do you want to calm down? But of course, a more natural translation would be, will you calm down? Be very careful with this because in some cases, when you use quieres at the beginning of a sentence, it's just a really passive aggressive way of asking someone, will you? For example, quieres dejar de hacer caras? Will you stop making faces? In this scene, Ariel is just kind of tired of Flounder always being so jumpy. Ariel. Flounder, ¿quieres calmarte? Nada va a pasar. Tiburones. Tiburones, of course, can only mean sharks. In this scene, Flounder has decided that he is not going to calm down and instead he's going to swim for his life. Oh, by the way, this reminds me of another time that Ariel was hanging out with Flounder under chiller circumstances only this time, something was a bit different about Ariel. 
Don't worry, we'll come back to this scene later and find out if Ariel and Flounder can escape from the tiburones. Mira lo que ha traído la marea hasta aquí. <risa> fíjate, fíjate. ¿Tienes algo diferente? No me lo digas. Ya lo tengo. Tu peinado, ¿verdad? Seguro que has utilizado el artiluquio. ¿No? No. Vamos a ver. Let's break this down. Mira lo que ha traído la marea hasta aquí. Atraído in this context means has dragged. This isn't a literal translation since both languages are using a play on words on expressions like look what the cat dragged in. Atraído comes from the verb traer which means to bring. So atraído literally translates to has brought. Here Scuttle is joking about Ariel washing up on shore unexpectedly. Marea here means tide. But be careful because marea doesn't only have one meaning. Thanks to the visual context of the scene, we know that Scuttle is talking about the tide, but that is not always the case. Sometimes you have to rely on subtitles to know what meaning a word is referring to. The only problem is that YouTube videos don't always have subtitles and the auto-generated captions tend to be helpless. However, when you watch videos on Fluent U, a very useful app for learning Spanish, all of the subtitles are written by language experts, so you always get the correct definition for words and expressions in that particular context. For example, If we click on marea in these interactive subtitles, we can see that in this other context, it actually means make dizzy. But if you were watching this music video, we would click on marea this time and see the right meaning for this other context, as well as other video examples where the word is used. Who in You features thousands of authentic Spanish videos for you to learn with, like movie or TED Talks and more. Plus, it also creates personalized quizzes and speaking questions based on the videos that you just watched to make sure that you stay on top of your vocab. Try it now for free. Just sign up for a two-week trial, link in the description below. Plus, Fluent U is currently having a sale, so it's the perfect timing if you like it. Mira lo que ha traído la marea hasta aquí. <laughs> fíjate, fíjate. ¿Tienes algo diferente? Fíjate here means look. Fíjate comes from the verb fijar, which literally means to set or to schedule. However, when you use fijar with me, te, se, nos, or os, the meaning changes to look or pay attention. In this scene, Scuttle notices that there's something different about the Little Mermaid, but he doesn't know what. Fíjate, fíjate. You can subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos like Learn Spanish with Nacho Libre. <laughs> fíjate, fíjate. ¿Tienes algo diferente? No me lo digas. Ya lo tengo. Tu peinado, ¿verdad? No me lo digas means don't tell me. Digas is the imperative form of the verb decir, which means to tell. Scuttle clearly has no idea what's different about Ariel, but at least he's trying. Peinado means hairstyle. The noun peinado comes from the verb peinar, which means to comb or to style hair. Peinado can also be a conjugation of the verb peinar, but in this scene, it's clear that Scuttle is just talking about Ariel's fabulous hair. No me lo digas. Ya lo tengo. Tu peinado, ¿verdad? Seguro que has utilizado el artiluquio. No? No. Vamos a ver. Um... Seguro in this context means surely. Be careful with this one because it can mean very different things depending on if it's being used as a noun, an adjective, or an adverb. If seguro is used as a noun, it means insurance. If seguro is used as an adjective, it means safe, sure, or confident. Lastly, if seguro is used as an adverb, it means surely or for sure. Here, Scuttle is remarking that surely Ariel has used the tool that they talked about before. Which brings us to artilugio, which in this scene means dinglehopper. 
Since, sadly, Dinglehopper is not a part of everyday speech, artilugio also translates to gizmo, device, or gadget. Scuttle is probably referring to the Dinglehopper that Ariel uses in another scene, one where she's behaving like a true fish out of water. Don't worry, we'll come back to this scene and see if Escorion can figure out what's different about Ariel later on in the video. Eso es muy bien, perfecto. ¿Estás cómoda? When you use eso es as an expression or a complete sentence, like in this case, it means that's right or indeed. However, if it's not a complete sentence, if it's followed by another word, eso es means that is. For example, eso es un vestido rosa. That is a pink dress. In this scene, Grimm is saying eso es to direct Ariel to take her place at the table. Cómoda is one of those Spanish words that can mean two very different things. In this scene, cómoda means comfortable because it's being used as an adjective. For example, no parece cómoda. She doesn't look comfortable. If you use cómoda as a noun, it means chest or dresser. In this scene, Grimm is simply looking out for Ariel's comfort. ¿Saben lo que es verdaderamente cómodo? Having our free PDF on hand. It allows you to access and study all of the vocabulary that we have learned in this video. Get it by clicking on the link in the description below. Eso es muy bien, perfecto. ¿Estás cómoda? <laughs> no, no solemos tener invitadas tan encantadoras, ¿verdad, Eric? Solemos comes from the verb soler, which means to usually do. For example, solemos comer en la mesa. We usually eat at the table. In this scene, Grimm is saying that they don't usually have guests as encantadoras as Ariel. Encantadoras comes from the verb encantar, which literally means to charm. But be careful, the verb encantar can also mean to love, which we'll see later in this scene. <laughs> no, no solemos tener invitadas tan encantadoras, ¿verdad, Eric? ¿Te gusta? Es un buen ejemplar. <laughs> ejemplar means model when talking about inanimate objects. For example, Un ejemplar de tenedor, a fork model. When talking about an animal, however, ejemplar is translated as specimen. For example, un ejemplar de cangrejo, a crab specimen. In this scene, Grimm says ejemplar because he's talking about the pipe, an object. ¿Te gusta? Es un buen ejemplar. <laughs> <laughs> Lo siento, Grimm. Dios means God. Mio in this expression means my. However, it frequently translates to mine. For example, ese cangrejo es mío. That crab is mine. Dios mío is a fixed expression though, so it always translates to oh my god. In this scene, Carlota finds Ariel's fish out of water antics very funny. Oh. <laughs> Dios mío. <clears throat> Lo siento, Grim. Eric, es la primera vez que te veo reír desde hace semanas. <laughs> desde means from or since. Hace here is not a form of the verb hacer, which means to do. Instead, it means ago. So, desde hace semanas literally translates to since weeks ago, which is said in weeks in proper English. Here, Carlota is saying that Eric hasn't laughed in a while, not necessarily literally weeks. <clears throat> Lo siento, Grim. Eric, es la primera vez que te veo reír desde hace semanas. Um, muy divertido. Querida Carlota, ¿qué hay de cena? Querida in this scene is being used as a term of endearment, so it can be translated to dear, darling, or sweetheart. But the meaning of querida can vary depending on who, how, and when you use it. 
If you're writing a letter, you start by writing querido or querida and the name of the person you're writing to. For example, querida Ariel, dear Ariel. If you use querida as an adjective, it translates to my dear. For example, Flounder, mi querido amigo. Flounder, my dear friend. In this scene, Grimm is referring to Carlota as my dear because they've known each other for a while. Muy divertido. Querida Carlota, ¿qué hay de cena? Oh, os va a encantar. El chef va a hacer su especialidad. Cangrejo relleno. Os va in this scene means your. Os is the second person plural pronoun vosotros. In Latin America, they usually use ustedes for the plural you. In Spain, however, we use vosotros in most situations and only use usted or ustedes when we want to be more polite or formal. For example, vosotros sois mis amigos, you are my friends, versus ustedes son mis jefes, you are my bosses. Carlota has been working at the castle for a while, so she uses the informal vosotros to address the room. Encantar here means to love. As we've seen recently, encantar can also mean to charm, but in this context, it means to love something. For example, me encantan las bodas. I love weddings. Carlota is saying that they're sure to love the main dish. Now, you're probably still wondering if Scuttle ever did find out what was different about Ariel and why. Well then, let's find out. Eh, conchas nuevas? No son las conchas. Conchas is the plural of concha, which is generally translated as shell or seashells. For example, Ariel usa conchas de sujetador. Ariel uses shells as a bra. But be very careful where you use the word concha. In some Spanish-speaking countries like Argentina, concha is a vulgar word. If you're ever in Argentina and you want to use the word seashells, I suggest you use the word caracol. In this scene, however, Scuttle is clearly asking if Ariel got a new seashell bra. Eh, ¿Conchas nuevas? No son las conchas. Eh, debo admitir que no consigo dar con el clavo. Dar con el clavo means put my finger on it. Literally, dar means to give. Con means with. El means the. And clavo means nail. When this expression is used in the negative sense, no consigo dar con el clavo, it means you can't put your finger on it. However, if this expression is positive, dar con el clavo means hit the nail on the head. Dar con el clavo is how they say put my finger on it in most Latin American dialects. However, in Spain we say dar en el clavo. Here, Scuttle is saying that he has absolutely no idea what's different about Ariel. Debo admitir que no consigo dar con el clavo, pero si me quedo un rato... ¡Tiene piernas, merluzo! Merluzo here is translated as cod. Merluzo is used as a way of insulting someone's intelligence. The word merluzo comes from merluza, which means hake. Here, Sebastián is not only calling Scuttle stupid for not being able to tell that Ariel clearly has legs now, but he's also using a fish pun to insult the seagull. Pero si me quedo un rato... ¡Tiene que... piernas, merluzo! Le dio su voz a la bruja del mar y tiene piernas, pesú. Bruja means witch, but it's also the base word for many different words like brujería, sorcery, embrujo, spell, or embrujar, to bewitch. Here, Sebastián is referring to Ursula as the sea witch. Besugo means buffoon in this scene. Besugo literally means bream, but it's also used as a way to insult someone's intelligence. That's right, there are many different kinds of fish names that can be used as insults in Spanish, and Sebastián uses all of them to insult Scuttle. Yo subo a la bruja del mar y tiene pierna, besugo. Ya lo sabía. Ariel se ha vuelto humano. Ya means already. However, ya can mean many different things depending on how it's used. Ya can mean now. For example, ven ya, come now. Ya can also mean by now. 
In this scene, Scuttle is pretending that he'd noticed that Ariel had legs all by himself. Okay, okay, now let's go back to Ariel and Flounder swimming for their lives in the first scene. <laughs> The word cobarde is both used for the noun coward and the adjective cowardly. For example, Flounder el pez cobarde. Flounder the cowardly fish. In this scene, Flounder taunts the sharks but immediately swims away afterwards. Eres un cobarde. Ya ves que eres infantil? No lo soy. Infantil here means childish. It comes from the word infante, which means toddler. If used as a noun instead of an adjective, the word infantil can be translated as kindergarten. In this scene, Ariel is basically calling Flounder a baby for being such a coward. ¿Ya ves que eres infantil? No lo soy. Okay, so now we're going to watch all three scenes without subtitles to see how much you've learned. ¿Alguna vez habías visto en tu vida algo más lindo que esto? ¡Qué lindo! Pero, ¿qué es eso? Ah, uh, no lo sé, pero Scorol nos lo dirá. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Lo oíste? Mm, ¿Y esto qué será? Ariel. Flounder, ¿quieres calmarte? Nada va a pasar. <ríe> Seguro que has utilizado el artiluquio. ¿No? No, vamos a ver. Eh, eh, ¿Conchas nuevas? No son las conchas. Eh, debo admitir que no consigo dar con el clavo. Pero si me quedo un rato... ¡Tiene que... piernas, merluzo! Le dio su voz a la bruja del mar y tiene piernas, pesugo. Ya lo sabía. Ariel se ha vuelto un mar. Eso es muy bien, perfecto. ¿Estás cómoda? Mm. <risa> No, no solemos tener invitadas tan encantadoras, ¿verdad, Eric? ¿Te gusta? Es un buen ejemplar. ¿eh? <risa> ¡Ay, Dios mío! Lo siento, Grim. Eric, es la primera vez que te veo reír desde hace semanas. Eh... Muy divertido. 
Querida Carlota, ¿qué hay de cena? Hoy oh, os va a encantar. El chef va a hacer su especialidad. Cangrejo relleno. In this next video, Woody insists on going with Bonnie to her first day of school. So, go find out what happens in that scene from Toy Story 4 as you learn more Spanish vocabulary and enjoy more Disney shenanigans.